to sit there, Michael. Um, we all know there have been issues in the past, but certainly uh, you would hope that, there, that those are all put to bed and that everybody's ready to go on. I suppose when you look at the Cork team and the, the experience that's in that team as well, I mean, Dennis Waltz, his manager, certainly has gone with experience. He's kind of held a few guys back in reserve, maybe on, in the subs bench. But um, uh, what you would see is because of not playing so many matches in the National League, this team certainly, they have to had to rely on a lot of challenge games over the last couple of weeks. And as little as late as last Wednesday night or Thursday night, I mean, they were still competitive in, in challenge games and stuff like that themselves. And having putting up high scoring a high scoring, but again, it's challenge matches. This is totally a different kettle of fish today. I would put it to the panel here, just looking at Cork for the moment before we talk about Tipperary, that Cork need to win back a few friends here today because there's no doubt to us, you've lost them the last couple Michael, of months. Michael, would you agree with that, lads? Well, yeah, de 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 definitely, I'd say, Michael, you know, that, you know, people are saying they got everything they wanted, but they didn't get everything they wanted. They lost an awful lot. And uh, as you say, they lost an awful lot of friends. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not so bad losing friends uh, outside your own county, but losing them within your own county is mm -hmm. very, very dangerous. And mm -hmm. that's one thing I noticed in Ennis today in Ennis uh, as well, that when they, when, when they played Clare in Ennis, and, the, and a few mm -hmm. other players got a, a bit of a barricade just mm -hmm. from a few fools in the crowd, yeah, yeah. they mm -hmm. seemed to retreat back into themselves. So well, how the players will react today? Will they have the same aggression, the same confidence, mm -hmm. you know, the same swagger that you say or say to Cork? Yeah. Yeah. And an awful lot will depend on the support they get from their own supporters but, yeah, today. They're getting a great chance today. Now, you That's just my point. At, mm -hmm. It's yeah. in Torless, the home of Hurland, really. Yeah. The, the pitch is brilliant. They're playing Tipperary, the old enemies. Mm -hmm. They're getting a chance here. If they can go out today and play a right good game and win it, they're going to redeem in most of the supporters' eyes in Cox. Okay, things might be a little bit against them down there, but a good victory can put the whole lot back on, on track again, and that's what we're going out for. Dennis Welch is a very kind of, he's a charismatic figure, with, uh, but been very quiet. Mm. I know him from, he was playing yeah, a lot yeah, of leaders. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, yeah. this, this, this had its effect though, Michael. This, the last couple of months had a serious effect. I mean, there is people blowing car have said they will not travel to, to, to watch a Cork team again yes. while, while, this, while this was going on and because of this team involved as well. So that's, that's pressure in itself. And the players yeah. themselves know that themselves. The, can you I mean, I'd love to be a fly on the wall inside that dressing room today with Cusack and Gardner yeah. and but these guys because they, they, can they have a that, point to prove today. They can use that pressure oh, for, the, for well, I mean, listen, it. That's what you expect. If it's hacky, gets the first ball and bangs it into the back of the I know, yeah. The whole travel yeah. back again, the whole thing is And all the people who say they're never going to see them play the course, most of them are there anyway. Anyway, they're all there anyway, you know. Tip of the most of champions. They don't care about what's going on in Cork. They care about their own stuff. Like, Michael, if Tipper to lay down a marker this year that they're, that they're going to be the next team to beat Kilkenny in All-Ireland Final, they have to win today. It's a bigger game today for them, I think, than for Cork. Because if they lose today, they're gone back from last year. And they're even going to draw Robin, it's not the same thing. They need to win today yeah. more than Cork do. I know Cork need to win, but I really think if Tipper are going to go places this year, they have to win today. All right, that's thanks for the moment. Uh, which we're going to hear right now from the rival managers. Liam Sheedy continues in another year in charge of Tipperary. While this, as we've been just saying, is the first championship test for the Cork manager, Dennis Walsh. They've been talking to Claire McNamara. Liam Tipper, hugely impressive here a few weeks ago. You begin the defence of your Munster title against Cork today. Always a tricky assignment. Yeah, absolutely, Claire. You know, we're under no illusions. It's a task that we have ahead of us today. You know, Cork, a serious hurling team. Love coming to Turles and, uh, you know, been going really well in the last few weeks. So, you know, it's really going to be nip and tuck, you know, and you know, I suppose in our, in our camp, we're happy that we have we work very hard. Uh, preparations have gone well. Uh, we have a few eyes coming back from injury. So we're really looking forward to the game, you know, but as I said, under no illusions in terms of the challenge that lies ahead. Owen Kelly is back with you. You've opted to go with him from the start. Yeah, Owen is a, you know, Owen's a special player. I think everyone is delighted. You know, I was talking to people from Kilkenny and everywhere, and they were all saying how great it is to see Owen back in the, in the jersey. You know, Owen is a, Owen is a, is a guy that's been doing it at the top level for a number of years, and I don't think, I think the sport and hurling needs needs Owen. So it's great to see him back in the, in, and wearing the jersey again today. Dennis, given what's happened in Cork, you and the players haven't had maybe as much time as you'd like to have prepared for today. Are Cork ready? Well, we've we eight weeks now, Claire, and we all know the, the situation, but. Uh, you know, we've moved on with the players. have been showing great spirit, and um, you know we've worked well there over the last maybe seven or eight weeks after the Kilkenny game and the Warford game in the league. And uh, we had a few challenge games, and they've gone reasonably well. I know it's not a, exactly a nasty test for today, but um, the spirit is good, and the players are fit, which is all the players are fit, which is a bonus, you know. You have some very experienced players, of course, but you have some newcomers today in the full back line and at full forward. Isaki O'Halpine has obviously impressed you since he came home from Australia. Well, he's, I mean, he's, um, you know, the O'Halpine's a great hurling pedigree and he was involved with the footballers for a little while, but uh, I think hurling would be the first grow, really. And um, once he got an opportunity, he's come in and, you know, he's a big, big guy, big man. He's well able to move and, like, he's great attitude and uh, he's very, doing a very good job for us. OK, to reinvent himself. And Dennis Walsh said, no, your time is up. Good luck. And that's pragmatic. It's tough. 
but he's not afraid to make those calls. But regardless of how Cork go today, they'll want to lay down a marker for the rest of the year and you know announce to the rest of the world that they're back and get their supporters behind them again. I think that's huge. And I know we can't uh, gauge anything by performances in challenge matches, but Cork have played Wexford, Limerick and Dublin and have been uh, notching up some fine spall. Handball, rounders, the encouragement to speak the Irish language, but none better perhaps than the unique game of hurling. Local rivalries lead to local county rivalries, but surely there is nothing better than Cork and Tipperary in a Munster championship. They meet today for the 79th time. Who will play Clare on June 21st in a Munster semi-final? It's Cork and Tipperary before 30, 35,000 people. Owen Kelly getting his first touch of the 2009 championship. He turns, he scores. And Marty, what a point by Kelly, but there's wholesale changes in the Tipperary attack. Noel McGrath has gone to right half forward, Callan at centre forward, and John O'Brien on the left, uh, with Owen Kelly top of the right. And Lara Corbett interestingly gone to full forward with uh, Michael Webster out in the corner. I'd never have seen Michael Webster as a corner forward, but obviously they're looking for the pace of Corbett in around the goals. From Newtown Chandram, under 21 All Ireland medalist back in 1998. He's added Senior County All Ireland and, of course, All Ireland club. And his dad, Bernie, was the manager. A few metres in from the sideline here, right in front of us. It's going straight where he wanted it to be. And 253 points in Championship Hurling. Made his debut nine years ago, by the way. And he sends that over the bar for his second point. Normal service has resumed in Tipperary. Donnelly and establishing himself over the last number of years as one of the best cornerbacks in the game. Sean O'Halpine. Don't know who's marking him, but Liam Sheedy won't be impressed. As O'Halpine again is dropping it in to younger brother Isaki. The ball breaks. There's a chance here for Kieran Murphy. Knock back fires Ben O'Connor. Little jink, little sidestep, short grip, point. Two points for Owen Kelly at one end, two points for Ben O'Connor at the other, and the sides are level after almost uh, six minutes of action. Great score by Ben, but... Porig Ma, what a wonderful league campaign he had. Playing here in his hometown of Thurles. Sean O'Gahalpin pulls. Didn't get any ground. Nicely picked up by Tom Kenny. Loses under pressure to Shane McGrath. Picked up here by Noel McGrath. He's only 18, not 19 until Christmas. Here's Callanan. Here's a point. Tipperary fans appreciate a good hurler and none better than young Seamus Callanan from Drummondinch. Yeah, and you can't buy that vision, Marty. Either have it or you haven't. Straight away looked up, saw the man outside. Lara Corbett back in the corner. There's better balance there about that full forward line with Owen Kelly, Webster and Lara. They tried Lara, obviously, on Cadigan. Cadigan cleared three balls, so they've gone back now to, to the normal setup. Donald Oaks, free. Gathered. And sent back down into the current half of the field. Shane O'Neill to Sean O'Gohalpine. He's really such a stylish hurler. All Ireland winning captain 2005. Tries to feed younger brother. Younger uh, Kieran Murphy is there. Back out fires Ben O'Connor. It's floating in. And the Cork fans at the town end applaud. Three points for Ben O'Connor. Two from play, one from free. And the sides are level again in County Tipperary. Tom Kenny knocked it down for Ben O'Connor. Here's Porig Marr. Delivers it in towards Mihal Webster. Owen Kelly is sniffing around there as well. Cork player down injured is Shane O'Neill. Make sure that Shane O'Neill is okay. Former Cork minor under 21 star from Bishopstown. This is what happened here. Oh, there was a collision, accidental collision with Mihal Webster. Eye on the ball. And Mihal, of course, is a big man as well. Standing at the edge of the square. About six foot two, six foot three. Here's Martin. The game seems to have settled down a bit in the last couple of minutes. I think the players look to be looking for their second second wind at this stage. Uh, they're out on their feet already. They wouldn't be used to training in these conditions or playing in these conditions and it's having a big bearing a big bearing on them. Looking at Owen Kelly the last few balls is getting it very hard to get out to them. So, you know, I think clever hurling out today, move the ball quick, running with the ball is out the window today. 
Interestingly, Tipperary haven't scored now since the sixth uh, minute. That's uh, a full 10 minutes, almost 11 minutes now as we, as the clock is. <laughs> Big round of applause for Shane O'Neill as he departs the arena. I wish him well. As Cork go back into the attack. Here's Niall McCarthy hitting it perfectly. Again, Brendan Cummins speeding this wing over towards Lar Corbett, who is wearing 10, but playing in a left-half forward position. Not a great pass for Woodlock, but he did well, despite Ben O'Connor's attention. Knocked away by Tom Kenny. Ben O'Connor, it rebounds off several people. It's still Kenny, pulled on there by Seamus Callanan. Comes over this side, and Tipperary have possession again. Striking it onto the left-hand side is Seamus Callanan. No wonder Cork were a little bit concerned about the uh, 20-year-old. They're level in simple for the fourth time. Wonderful strike here by the number 11. Yeah, and he's having a quiet game, but two chances, two points. He's turned into a class player. Scored the straight to Owen Kelly and Larry Corbett in the corners. The half forward line are coming way out the field, and the Cork half, half back line, surprisingly, are following them a long way. And they're leaving huge gaps in behind, and they're playing it straight into Owen Kelly and Corbett. That's the tactic. All star midfielder last year, Shane McGrath. It is. Absolutely beautiful to watch. Some will argue that a sideline cut. Brendan Cummins, 34 since the 11th of May, hoping before he retires to uh, add another All Ireland medal, perhaps a Munster Championship medal. John O'Brien. 12 championship appearance gives the ball away to Ben O'Connor half blocked by Porrick Barr added to by Noel McGrath far as Shane McGrath no relation gives it back outside far as John O'Brien takes up a right half forward position he's capable of scoring from there and he's just done it great skill it's all in the wrists it's all in the confidence and the balance knew exactly what he was doing no that's he, li he didn't just pick, he lifted it about two feet off the ground before he picked it nothing before he wrong caught. nothing wrong with that much no he picked the ball cleanly yeah i can't just understand that one free is taken ronan kern is underneath it who has it john o'brien lays it off far as mcgrath after scoring the point from the sideline he adds one from play 14th championship appearance today former saint flannan star from ennis is a player of rich potential. Wing towards Niall McCarthy, switching with himself and Timmy McCarthy in towards the full forward line that needs more possession. This ball floated in very high. So high that is there a touch there. Brendan Cummins, there's a bit of a scramble. The referee is blowing now his whistle and he's going in to have a word, I'm pretty sure with his umpires as Brendan Cummins is on the ground there's the slither now he's going to have a word with his uh, two umpires I'm sure <laughs> well done anyway the free going to be taken by Ben O'Connor he scored four times in this Munster Championship quarter-final he now has five this was the incident again as that ball dropped in Let's see what happened. There's the ball breaking loose. There's Brendan Cummins. And it's a scramble. The ball comes loose. Your, yeah, your I, call? I, you know, I don't think he lay in it. He, the ball dropped him square and he went, he went for it, I think, fairly. And it, it, I think it throw him was the right decision. Here's Lar Corbett looking around at options. Oh, that's a sweet strike of a slither. He's a class player, really fully recovered from the two injuries he picked up in the early stages all accidental knocks but this is a wonderful strike he's got such balance such speed and such confidence because he's only a few meters in well Brendan Cummins oh that's a testing ball and don't look music not a touch to it comes out first me Hall Webster Back outside, chance here, great block down, it's Noel McGrath, he uses the short grip and this time there's no doubt that Noel McGrath from Lockmore Castellani has scored his second point of the match. 
He won two All-Ireland minor medals in 2006 and 2007. He's graduating to senior ranks this afternoon. You're going to hear, as I've mentioned before, a lot more about young McGrath. Yeah, and interestingly, Marty Cork has switched Sean Ogan to John O'Brien. Remade. Additional time here in Simple Stadium. Two minutes as Ben O'Connor poses and focuses on this free. Umpire is happy that it went over the bar. Tomas Mulcahy is here with us. Tomas, Cork haven't really flowed, but they're only four points down. No, I suppose those, those last two points there just before half-time will, will upset Tipperary because going in at six, six points up at half-time, you would say maybe they were in the driving seat, but it certainly has brought a bit more life back into Cork. Disappointing from the forwards point of view, Ben O'Connor getting two points and playing nine McCarthy, getting the other one, that the, the forwards haven't certainly flowed. And uh, if there was more worries, probably in, a, a bit in defence where um, the two cornerbacks are under pressure. And certainly we haven't seen that half-back trio of, of uh, Gardner, Corner and O'Halpin in that first half period, which is a worry. It certainly is a worry for Cork going into the A lot half. of talk, of course, going into this match about Osaka O'Halpin at full forward hasn't really featured. No, he hasn't featured, you know, and uh, certainly, I mean, he's six foot six, as, as they say, and the six foot six man should be in around the edge of the square. More often in the first half, we've seen him way out in the half forward position, out in the corner forward position, and like tactically, Jar, you mentioned that Cork will be playing a different game. When you have a man that size, you must put him in at the edge of the square and you must put the right ball inside him. And we haven't done that in the first half. There's been balls that have gone down the wing and he hasn't been used as a target man to the effect that I thought he would be used. OK, Gerlach Nan, Sir uh, <coughs> Farrell with us here in studio. We'll be hearing from them shortly. It's time for us to take a break. But more on the game from Thurlis in just a few moments. at halftime by four points by tip and there is the list of scores that we've had in the first half so far. Back here in studio we have Tomas Mulcahy, Ger Nan and uh, Cyril Farrell with us. Ger, Claire will play the winners of this match. Any idea who it's going to be? Well, it's looking mm. very like Tipperary at the moment because, uh, you know, they're not playing with the same aggression or the same drive as they had against, Tipper, uh, against Kilkenny and that's natural, you'd expect that after the big game like that. But they are playing with the very same tactics. That half forward line are moving way out the field. That full fo full forward line are out 40 yards from their own goal. They're dragging the half ba the, the, the cock half back line all over the place from wing to wing. Now, how do you counter counteract it? That's mm. the whole yes. thing you have to look at. Mm. The first rule is backs must hold their line. Mm. The full back line must hold their line. The half back must, must hold their line. Now, when they did this to, did this to Kilkenny, what Kilkenny did was brought, brought back Chaffitz, brought Ch Brown Chaffitz put him into that gap in the centre, and they kept their wingmen way out on the wings. Thus stopping from Tipperary from getting that loose ball that they're getting along the wing. Now, Sal will show you in a few minutes a lot of the points that came mm. from that ball along the wing. Now, with the wing back absent, it's, you know, you're given a clear shot to the man with the ball to put it over the bar. So you must hold your line. You know, wing backs must stay there, and the midfielder must come back to cover that area. Now, as you, as, you, yeah. as you said there, Nocton is ideal for that. Carl sure. Nocton is, he has the engine for it. I don't think Chaddy O'Connor has the engine for it anymore. Mm. Nocton is ideal for that. And it's an awful wonder that Cork have made that change already. In actual fact, sir, some of those things that Ger have been pointing out there would be even more pronounced if Tip had taken some of the early chances that they got because they hit a lot of wides. But then when they started to find the target, they were really getting points. I won't say handy enough, but certainly yeah, some but nice points. They had missed a few before this, Michael, and they're bound to come like here again. You can go back to what Ger said. A little flick out the side here. Now this is Seamus Cannon, he's a good 65 yards out here on his left side, bang over the bar. Now it's a great score, like, and it's not in the backs and the inside line can do this. Again, another, you can see him here picking it up, and he's very good on, on the left hand side, left or right. He's a centre forward, but he's kind of a modern centre forward. This again, now is lovely ball in here. Now look at this little sharp pass here from McGrath, little flicker cross here. Backs back to Noel McGrath there from Shea, from Shea in the midfield, and like, that's a great score. Now Noel McGrath is playing wing forward, he's one of the new breed, and like, it's a kind of a dangerous ball really, that little short little flick like that. Now in the end one or two of them went wrong, and Cork got two points over, but when it goes over the bar, it looks lovely. But tip at this stage, we're in full flow. Here again now, they're doing a lot of work with Jerseys under the puck house. This is a great catch. Larry Carr was being kind of winded <coughs> early on, catch, bang over the bar. The only thing that's kind of bothering when you're talking here at halftime, tip are scoring from outside. They really haven't threatened the goal. For tip mm. really to put Cork where they're going to need a goal, because even though Cork aren't playing well, there's always a threat inside, even just before the, the break mm. there, there could have been a 21 in or could, could have been the ref give it through him. But anything can happen. When you're not putting the team away, you could be still in trouble. Cork That's always the danger, of course. When you're bringing out your forwards too far, very, very far, I mean, you are playing a game where you're going to score points. You're aiming to yeah. score, say, yes, you're, you're yeah. aiming to win by points and then maybe uh, aiming for uh, one uh, ball inside. Later on, when you've worn down the backs, later on, when you've worn down the backs, 
maybe in the second half, then you'll run at them and go for the goal. But at the moment, they just, just want to open a, a gap on Cork. They have done that. Now, they've let Cork come into the game in the last five minutes. Mm. Yeah. But if Tip get a goal in this game, it's all over. Having said that, Cork, the old reliable Ben O'Connor got a couple of points in play, but we haven't seen too much of this from Cork. Yeah, but they're still, like, he's a great player. Like, here, listen, again now, you're going to see this ball come across here from midfield. Now, Cork are still good horse, but they're being dragged left, right, and centre. This is a long ball going up. Now, here, there's a breaking ball here now. Kieran Murphy gets on this. You'd imagine here a little flick back out, and he gets bottled up. Back out to Ben O'Connor. Ben won't miss, miss these, like. Like, even though Kieran Murphy hasn't been on the ball much, and he's done, he's, he's fed Ben O'Connor back out. But the interesting the thing there, there, Michael, was the man that was in the edge of the square that time was Kieran Murphy. It wasn't exactly, mm. it was a high ball that came in. Kieran Murphy was the man that had to go up for the ball, even though we did get a point out of it. I thought the play was to put Izaki in there, yeah. let Kieran Murphy wait for the break, which is then becomes a goal-scoring chance. It ended up in a point, but... Um, tactically, maybe just to put more high ball, but keep exactly on the edge of the square. This Close. happened, this happened so last year as well, you know. <coughs> they put uh, Pe Hogan in at the edge of the square. Uh, yes. uh, sorry, it was Pe 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 Cronin Cronin yes. in yeah. at the edge of the square. Mm. And they started putting high ball into him, and he was completely beaten out of it. Now, this year, you were certainly, uh, Saki was put in there, there's, they'd be lobbing ball in on top of him, and then the other two corner forwards racing in for the break. But it's just not happening. Your former colleague, Dennis Walsh, the Cork manager, would like a look at our little Piero that we're going to show the viewers right now to point out a couple of things to him about the way they've tactically played this first half. Yeah, worryingly, I suppose, in, in the first half period is, is, is the amount of players, Cork players, that have actually been sucked into a central position and they haven't kept their positions. Particularly, I mean, I mean, Owen Cadigan has had a very good first half. Here we see, look, there's the four guys turned and they're facing back towards goal. Yeah. There's, there's not a man of their own in sight and the ball breaks out the cannon and it's straight over the bar. Watch it again, the ball brought down here. We we'll circle it out in the wing here. There's John O'Brien in isolation, all yeah. on his own, right? And I mean, again, it's 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 inevitable that the ball is actually going to go out there. Here he is. Watch it again. Hand pass outside, and this is a great score. And you see John Garner there. John Garner started a right half back. Whether they've made a switch now to, to put him on the other side of yeah. John Og on the right, but the, the, that half back line have been sucked in completely. Where you have five or six. Cork guys under the ball in central positions and as soon as it breaks you're thrown out to the runners of Tipperary you know so fair play to Liam Sheedy you know it's a brilliant sure. tactic yeah, yeah you know, I mean, he's, he's, like he's, he's, he's kept running Cork yeah. out yeah, the game yeah, 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 yeah. you're talking about the Cork before like, it, like, there isn't that much ball going in because the half that time have been dragged along mm. pace centre field isn't really in it so like Tip have about 78% to play but they're still having them out of sight they'd want to be careful or Cork will come right back into the game alright lads we're going to have more on this Monster Hurling Championship match and that's right after these because, I mean, uh, Tip of all that first half, they've had a lot of opportunities. I mean, we've seen over the past number of years, I mean, Cork have come good in the second half period when they've kept themselves in the game and those two points before half time were, were actually crucial to him. I think Owen Cadigan has acquitted himself very, very well in that first half period. Mm -hmm. Sheeran O'Neill right. has been a big, big loss to him going off because he was their tally man back there, certainly. Get it right in their half back line, and I would just uh, agree with with, with Mike, Mike, uh, Michael Dignan as well. I mean, Cahan Nocton, I think, has to come into the fray at this stage. There are other guys. I mean, I saw a few of their challenge matches over the last couple of weeks. Guys like Fintan O'Leary, Paddy O'Sullivan, Patrick Cron, and all these guys did very, very well in those games. And if it isn't going right in the first five or ten minutes, Dennis Walsh and his manager team will have to bring these guys in. If Nocton comes in, Jer, who's going out? I'd say Jerry O'Connor, you know, he's completely out mm, of the game. Now, they're mm. an awful lot. Timmy McCarthy's hardly touched the ball, yeah. you know. Uh, inside the full forward line, Kieran Murphy, but well, Patrick Hogan, who's a great player, hasn't touched it. But, I, you know, I don't know about the lads. Are we seeing the end of this possession game, the, cock, or the tippy tappy hurling, as Cyril often called it? Because tip is so fast. They're so fit, they're working it, they're so great, they're closing down all of that kind of short passing stuff. Would Cork be better off now to go to a more direct game in the second half even already? And if you have a big full forward like a sack inside, get it and drive it in and let your, full, your corner forwards be coming in for the break. So a much more sharper, more direct game is Cork's only but hope Gerard, of retrieving you know, this. To, get in, to win any game, you have to have the engine going right. The mm. Cork engine isn't going. Half back by midfield mm. aren't in the game in the first half. There's five guys there that have been kind of really out hurled. Now, if you're going to win, they're going to have to get on top. It's a very warm day down in Thurles, obviously, mm. and that must be a factor for some of the lads who've been there for a while, the McCarthy's, I suppose, the Connors and that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, they're talking about who to win on. If Con Not comes on, he could even come on in the, full, in the full forward line and go out as a third midfielder. But I expect Tip to drive on. If they're going to make a real show of this mm. championship, yeah. they have to drive on from here, and they have to go as well, go for Brooks, stick a goal or two in the net. This game needs a goal or two, because even though it's a good contest, it hasn't really come to light. Four points in it, though, in a hurling championship match, sure. It's not oh, listen, four, four it's, points. It's, 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 it's nothing, all right? It's, but it's, it's, sometimes a point is an awful lot in a hurling game. You know, <laughs> and four points yeah. is a lot today because Tip are so much on top. They should have been enough. They should be much, much further ahead than they are. Now, if they get a goal, it's all over. Mm. If Cork come out with a much more aggressive 
a kind of attitude, maybe with a few changes, younger legs, because mm. definitely the Sean Oaks and the John Garners, uh, even though John Garners is a young fella, there's an awful lot of lethargy there in, 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 in that well, car team. Well, well, it you, must be faster, it must be sharper, and it must be more direct if Cocker to get back into it. Okay, let's see what's going to happen. Now we're going to head back to Semper Stadium where we're going to rejoin Marty Morrissey and Michael Dignan. Thank you very much, Michael. Welcome back to Simple Stadium. No changes on either side. But uh, we can tell you that Shane Murphy is now a permanent uh, substitute. You may recall Shane O'Neill got injured in that opening half. As Cork and Tipperary resume the battle. And a place against Clare in a Munster semi-final on June 21st is at stake. Here is Shane Murphy. Lays it off as Cadigan. Mark Corbett getting it inside. There's a chance for Tipperary! <laughs> Wonderful goal. This is a ball that should have been cleared. But when the ball came in to Callanan, there was no stopping it. Not no. even a great tunnel log. No, and it might have took a slight deflection there, but... Gerald Nan uh, back today for the first time in a couple of years. And Great control, but loses a little bit uh, too much of it. Picked up by the goal scorer, Callina. Pulled in the air. Comes for Sean O. Cork need to get the ball in now to Sakio Halpin. He's willing to take on Paul Kern. Paul says, thou shalt not pass. And Osaki O'Halpin gets his first point in championship hurling. Yeah, Marty, I think psychologically that's fierce and important. Again, Sean now picks him out, a great ball inside, and uses his strength to shake off Paul Kern and a good score, and I think that's, that's very important. Good ball down for his Lark Corbett. Inside is Callanan again. Parker exposed here. He's going for the point, and he's well taken. That's a goal and three points for the centre-half forward. He can afford a smile. Great pass from Corbett. Callanan called, and Callanan delivered. He's just had a bad miss. He's just had two, in fact. But he's still given the responsibility of taking the penalty. It's a real test of mental strength. Here he goes, and Cummins. Brilliant save. Fabulous save by Brendan Cummins from Ballybacon Grange. Pat Horgan hit it well, but he hit it straight at Cummins, and Cummins just literally closed his eyes but he was in the right place his it, it hit his body but the car crowd are incensed here Timmy Mc right on his own goal line breaking ball picked up by Gardner captain of Cork the piercing man drives it in and sends it over the bar for a truly inspirational point because his back was to the goals at the Kalanen end and still responding at the other end as that continues on and Here's the John Logue has thrown the whole Webster's Hurley away. Ben O'Connor down at this end. There is the substitute Cronin. And that's a point. Para Cronin. Registers his first point in the Munster Championship of 2009. Down at the other end. The two boys are rather quiet at the moment. But you can see we all Webster's Hurley. Takes his eye off the ball. And here come Jerry O'Connor and Cork. Evo stick being used by the Newton Chandra man. Gives it to his twin brother. Goes for the point. It's hit high. It's hit over the bar. Nine points for Ben O'Connor. Cork are not beaten yet. And the fans, loyal fans, respond to what's happening on the pitch. Cork introduced another substitute as we look at Ben O'Connor. Back in the 70s and 80s, super sub, Pat Cronin. Must have looked at recent videos because this is an impact sub. Two great points by the Bishopstown star. Two to the slither. And in fact, to be fair, Pat Cronin was right beside him. But we can tell you now that uh, number 24 is Brendan Marr from Boris Ali. And coming off is the Tipperary captain, Conor O'Mahony. It's good to see Connor back playing. He's had a bout of the mumps and that uh, takes time to recover. So it's good to see him play. It is. And he was down for the last few minutes. And, and Owen Kelly seems to be dragging the leg badly. That's obviously an effect from the back into the hamstring. And, you know, it's very hard to come out there after missing months of training and, and performed here. Even though Connor managed a great game while he was on. But it's hard to last it out for the full 70 minutes. Owen Kelly with the free and the point. Surface. Lays it back for his Ronan Curran. Cork throwing everything at the champions. Here's O'Halpine. Osaki 
beats Paul Curran. The pass inside is not a good one. Cummins is on the deck. In comes the substitute, Paddy O'Sullivan, and the referee has blown his whistle for a foul on Brendan Cummins. Going to be a free out for Tipperary and indeed for Brendan Cummins. Just watch this again. Isaki O'Halpin get inside. The pass was not a good one. Brendan Cummins did well here. And he just got a touch of an elbow there from one of the court players. Good goalkeeping, brave goalkeeping. As uh, obviously Pat Horgan just... <laughs> Mr. Consistency. Fucked away. Farisla Corbett. Chance here for Benny Don. Hits it sweetly. Quality players always come to the surface when the chips are really down. And Tipperary. Ten minutes since Cork scored. And if they can get an equalising goal, we'll have ten minutes each way, extra time, remember. Here comes the ball. Here comes the point. It's his third of the afternoon. Cahal Nocta. Hasn't really got a touch since introduced. Consequently was blocked. Shane McGrath gives it out to Benny Dunn. Going for his second point. And he's got it. Joyce in Simple Stadium. Brendan Cummins goes to the ground because Cork have been beaten. What do they say in the past? Once Cork are beaten and the hay is saved, well then it's a great day for Tipperary. But here today, they show tremendous composure because Cork threw everything, absolutely everything at them in the second half. I think you'd agree, Michael Dyke. I, I think it was a fantastic contest. I think we'll probably be talking about Timmy McCarthy's goal maybe tonight, but I think Owen Kelly in the first half was true for a goal as well. But credit to both sides. Cork, you know, everything is, that's happened in the past is now water under the bridge. Fantastic game. I really enjoyed it from start to finish. And I think just about overall, Tipperary deserved to win it. But I think on the sideline, I said it during the commentary, they'll be asking questions about some of the substitutions, whereas Cork used their sub bench much better. But overall, I think Tipperary just about having the tougher league final, the tougher league. It stood to them the last few minutes. They saw John Gardner going down injured. And overall, Tipperary just about deserved to win. Well, at half time, Tipperary led by five points. But a minute into the second half, Seamus Callanan scored a cracking goal. And it would seem at that stage, 113 to 9, well, then Tipperary were sailing. But uh, Cork's passion and pride, well, they can take full credit for this. They're getting applause, they're getting that slap on the back. And I know they'll be heartbroken and disappointed because they've lost to Tipperary here today. But by gosh, have they shown pride in that jersey. And Dennis Walsh, I'm sure when he speaks to uh, Claire McNamara, our reporter here later on, that he will talk about pride. Cork are heading to the qualifiers. Tipperary are heading to uh, play Clare on June 21st in a Munster under 20 Munster semi-final and it should be good. Full-time score in Semple Stadium, Tipperary 119, Cork 19 points. Back to you, Michael. And your commentators, of course, were Marty Morrissey and Michael Dagny. We're back here in the studio to reflect on that game. I'm going to reflect first with Tomás Mulcahy. Tomás, a fascinating game in many ways. Tipperary, the Munster champions, have put up the first defence of that. And yet Cork have also come out of this with huge credit. Yeah, certainly. And uh, you, it looked at halftime, as we had said, that maybe Tip would, would pull away. And a couple of minutes into the second half and the goal goes in and they go seven points ahead. You say, yes, this is a roll across the right for Tipperary. But I must give credit to, the, to this Cork set up, being honest with you. I mean... I mean, they've taken an awful lot of stick themselves over the last number of months. Uh, I said you'd want to be a fly in the wall inside in the dressing room. I imagine to be in there at halftime because they came out a different team. Made a few positional changes, put mm -hmm. John Garner into midfield, Tom Kenny back to half back, and uh, used their bench very, very well in the second half period as well. And only for a few opportunities, few chances that they didn't take in that second half, they would have won that match because tip. I mean, on the other side, lost their way completely and, and a lot of substitutions in that, that, that second half by guys who had given major, major performance in the first half period. And I think the one man maybe that everybody questioned today was maybe number three at Owen Cadigan at fullback. He had a colossus game and it's great for him, great for his confidence. Last year, that man decided he'd give up on the Cork senior football team. He wasn't getting a run. He wasn't getting a break. He's got a break with the Cork senior hurling and he's taken his chance brilliantly today. Exactly at the other end played much better in the second half because the ball, was, as we mentioned, was much more direct, straight into him, yeah. and he caused endless problems inside there. So two devils today, 
Cork will be happy with those. They'll be disappointed that they lost the match, but there's a lot to take from this game. And Gerlach now, no disgrace in defeat at all from Cork. I'm sure you'd agree with Tomás. Absolutely no disgrace whatsoever. The rest were terrific in the second half. The secret of the second half, of course, was the dominance of the, of that half-back line. You know, when they put Tom Kenny back, as they did against Galway last year in the, in, in the second half. When Kenny goes back there, he seems to play much better. Gardner played absolutely fantastic at midfield. They played direct balls straight into the full forward line. Now, I disagree with Michael Dyden, as he disagreed with me. <laughs> I think when, you, when, when your players are being cleaned out, as they were, by, as McGrath was, and Callum were by Sean Ogan by, uh, and by Ronan, uh, Corn. Corn, yeah. You have to do something. You have to be on something else. Be on mm. other players. And eventually, Benny Dunn was a key man at the end. Got two points that opened up that gap when he came down to a one-point lead. So, she, she did behave very well. And Tip will be delighted to come out of a hole like this. And it'll do all the good for that confidence. And I think they can only go forward from this. Let's find out how delighted they are because we're talking now to their manager, Liam Sheedy. Yes, indeed. Liam Sheedy and his daughter, Ashling are with me. Liam... What a great contest. Cork really threw everything at you in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I suppose, you know, in fairness to Cork, they'll be wondering how they didn't take us. You know, in fairness, um, the goal was probably a big decision. You know, it was touch and go. You give the penalty, we made a great save, um, and they, they put the 65 wide. And, you know, in fairness, there was a few times where they had chances and, and, and didn't take their chances. But I, I knew it was going to come down to the last two minutes of this game. I never expected anything else. Fabulous team, you know. Ever since they, that bunch have got together, they've, they've, done, the, they've done their county proud, and they, they put in an enormous performance. And, you know, for a team that, you know, we're Supposed to be here and supposed to be there, you know. You'd have to give them full credit, you know. We were put to the pin of our collar and we got the breaks today, and really that, that game today came down to breaks. But you know, delighted with the heart and the effort that my lads showed as well, you know. They never stopped going, you know. I mean, right to the finish, you know, 72, 73 minutes. It was really warm out there. We we ended up, I think, putting in 15, starting 15, had five come off the bench and had a blood sub as well. So um it was it was oh, it was full shoulders to the wheel and just delighted with the victory because I knew I you know people were saying it, we were, it was going to be this, it was going to be I never, you know, must for championship. So Fabulous, fabulous competition, and we're delighted to have snuck in. You know, but the funny thing is, we're just in as far as where we started last year because now you just, you just end up in the semi final. But you know, it just delighted with the win today. You did dominate the first half, maybe should have been more ahead than the goal in the second half. It looked like you were on your way, but you, you lost your way a bit. Yeah, we did lose our way, you know, but I mean, you're not going to you're not going to hold a team like Cork, you know, you're not they're going to have periods of dominance, and we expected that today, you know, there's always going to be periods where the game will ebb and flow, and you know, the, the good thing was this, was the goal did give us a little bit of, of, of breathing space, and I tell you what, we needed all that breathing space in the finish, and uh, you know, just, it was, it was, it was hot, you know, I couldn't, you couldn't catch your breath, you know, I, I'd say for, for anyone watching, it was edge of the seat stuff, you know, it was definitely edge of the sideline stuff, and anyway, whatever, all edge of the seat, but uh, we're happy, you know, we're delighted, you know, it's, it's first round of the championship is always a big one, we had a lot